We begin with Trace Gallagher giving us the backstory on all of this tonight. Hi, Trace. Hi, Martha. When news broke that 41 year old Kristen Davis was being questioned in the special counsel probe, it immediately became ample grist for the media mill. But the nexus between the former madam and Mr. Mueller is its own fascinating tale that dates back some 10 years. After spending a half decade running a high end prostitution ring with 10,000 clients that Kristen Davis says included one time New York Governor Elliot Spitzer, Davis pleaded guilty to one count of prostitution and was sent to Rikers Prison. After her release in 2008, Kristen Davis went on a New York radio show and met a political advisor named Roger Stone, who encouraged her to run for New York governor on a libertarian platform of legalizing prostitution, marijuana, and gay marriage. Davis lost the governor's race, but she maintained her friendship with Roger Stone. In fact, he is now godfather to her young son, and the three actually live platonically in the same New York apartment. Stone lives upstairs, Davis and her son downstairs. But experts say special counsel Mueller is likely much more interested in Davis's working relationship with Roger Stone, specifically her role, if any, during the 2016 campaign. Kristen Davis says she did not work with Roger Stone in the run-up to the presidential election. And during an interview with our Fox affiliate, WNYW, Davis says during her questioning by the special counsel team, she felt bullied. Watch. We were saying how intimidating it must have been. Was it? Completely. I mean, you're sitting in a room, there's no defense attorney, which is how the grand jury goes, um, with a prosecutor who clearly has a rapport with these jurors and answering leading questions. It was how, That must have concerned you, bothered you a little? It bothered me. I left there feeling very sick to my stomach. Roger Stone has also commented saying Kristen Davis has, quote, no knowledge of Russian collusion, WikiLeaks collaboration, or any other illegal activity on my part. And we should note that Kristen Davis is one of about a half dozen of Roger Stone's associates to be contacted by Mueller's office. Martha. Trace, thank you. Here now an exclusive interview with former Manhattan Madam Kristen Davis, owner of Bombshell Beauty Lab, which is your newest uh, endeavor. Good just to have you here, Kristen. Um, so basically, they're casting a very wide net around Roger Stone, and they are trying to find out if you knew anything about perhaps his relationship with Guccifer, his discussions with Julian Assange, the potential to leak emails through, Wiki, through WikiLeaks. Is any of that anything that you were familiar with? I mean, I have no knowledge of Russian collusion, of any wrongdoing in the 26th campaign. I didn't even work for Roger Stone at that time. Um, he has been one of my best friends for many years. Also, uh, him and his wife are godparents to my two-year-old. But in terms of uh, Russian collusion, I don't even believe that happened. But you, you live in the same building as we just heard. So, right. and we have a duplex. You see each other floors. and your friends, and socially, I would imagine. That's so, he correct. did he ever discuss with you anything along the lines of, well, you know, there's some pretty hot uh, emails that are about to drop. Julian Assange gave me a heads up, and and something along those lines. Anything along those lines ever? I mean, what he did discuss was that he did not have any direct communications with Julian Assange. Julian Assange went on CNN in July of 2016, said the goods were coming. Um, I think that it's been pretty public knowledge that Randy Credico was the intermediary between the two of them. So that's the story that he has repeated from 2016 on to now to me as a personal friend. So I believe that that is actually the truth. So when you were in the grand jury and they were questioning you, what was their attitude about their case? I mean, I think they're legitimately investigating whether collusion happened. Yeah. Um, but their attitude is that... Uh, I mean, they're prosecutors in a room with a grand jury that they have a relationship with. They've been there for months. They seem to be on um, joking and uh, fun sort of camaraderie in there, which is concerning. Um, but there's nobody there to present another set of facts, and that also is concerning to me. So what kind of questions did they ask you? Did they ask you anything that you thought was strange? Um, I think they just asked the same things that the news media has been asking. What about this Podesta tweet? And what about, you know, some of the, the things that have been made public? Because it certainly tends to foretell 
um, of, of some ominous event coming, but I think all those things are also public information if you do your research. Right. So, so that refers to a tweet that Roger Stone sent out uh, shortly before the election saying that it, it, it'll soon be Podesta, meaning John Podesta, the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton, it'll soon be his time in the barrel. Right. right. Which is often so misconstrued. It what said you know? the Podestas. And it always gets changed by the media, but it was the Podestas, and he was referring to Uranium One. It was not referring to, to this colossal event that happened. I think the difference is um, that people want to portray Roger as a win at all costs, dirty trickster. But the actuality of that is he's not going to go commit a crime defrauding the entire country of their democracy to win an election. So you're saying that he was he was referring to Uranium One, that that case That's was going to be back in the mix and he not in any way was referring. Well, doesn't it seem a little ironic that, that the emails that came out were all John Podesta? Well, I mean, or many of them were co coincidence. Um, I don't think that he actually had any firsthand knowledge about the content. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Julian Assange went on CNN and said there's something coming out. And so the world was waiting. So you could, you know, make a reasonable assumption with a set of facts of what that would be. Kristen Davis, thank you very much. Good to have you here today. Thanks for coming in.